Alhamdulillah, Salatu Salam ala Rasulullah. Inshallah, today we're going to be doing the tafsir of Surah Al Falaq. The combination of Surah Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas is known as Mawadatayn. And these are the two surahs that we are instructed to recite in addition to uh, ayat like Ayat Al Kursi for our protection from many different evils. And when we go through the translation of both these surahs, inshallah, we'll find that they are very comprehensive in covering all of the different types of evil that a person could be uh, exposed to or afflicted with. So according to the Mufassireen, both of these two surahs were revealed when the Prophet ﷺ was afflicted with some magic that was done upon him. Inshallah, we will discuss that in detail a little bit later, uh, especially when we are doing uh, the tafsir of Surah Al-Nas. But today, inshallah, we're going to do the tafsir of Surah Al-Falaq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he addresses the Prophet Ali salatu wasalam, and he tells him, Qul a'udhu bi Rabbil Falaq. Tell the people. Now, all of the Qur'an has been revealed to humanity and the Prophet ﷺ was the one who gave us the Qur'an. He was the messenger that brought the Qur'an to us. So why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically, he tells him at certain junctures in the Qur'an, قُلْ Tell them. Whereas the whole Qur'an has been told to us by the Prophet ﷺ. So the answer to that question is that whatever is coming after the word full, it is something that we need to pay particular attention to. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in certain places where the subject matter is very important, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pay particular attention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa full, tell them. And then what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to know? He is telling us through the action of the Prophet ﷺ that we as humans need to do exactly the same thing that the Prophet ﷺ is demonstrating in this surah. And what is that demonstration? That he ﷺ, is seeking refuge from the different types of evil. So in the first ayah, Allah says, tell them, say to them, Tell humanity, tell the Muslims, I seek refuge in the Lord of Al Falaq. So, seeking refuge is what's been taken here. Uh, the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being sought here. And what does Rabbul Falaq mean? Rabb, basically, uh, which is loosely translated as Lord, but the reality is that. Rabb means that person or that entity who takes care of you and who looks after you. So in this sense, we are using the word Rabb to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who already takes care of us, who already protects us, who already sustains us, who already gives to us, that, oh Allah, we want to take your refuge from the following evils. And al-falaq, it refers to the dawn. The dawn meaning the morning. And the actual meaning of falaq is the, the cracking, a cracking, or a splitting open. And why is the dawn called the splitting? Because when you look at the horizon, at the time of dawn, you will see this light across the horizon which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described about in Surah Al-Baqarah when referring to the time of the opening of the fast or the, or the beginning of the fast, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, described, this, described it as the white string which is emerging from the uh, black string. So this white string that is coming across the horizon it makes it look like a splitting is taking place between the night and the day. 
So that is why the dawn is referred to as Fala. And this has been mentioned in another verse in the Quran, Faliqul Isbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who splits open the Isbah, meaning the illumination of the new day or the dawn, Faliqul Isbah. And another meaning of Falaq in uh, a different context is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is inna allaha faliqul habbi wa nawa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who splits the seed and the date palm pit, the date pit. So when we put the seed into the ground and we give it water and so on, the seed that we could have placed on a table and it could have been there for a hundred years, but it would not sprout anything. But when we put it into the correct environment, what happens is that it splits open. Who is the one that makes it split? And something which is as hard as a date pit, which is harder than stone even, even that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it split open and from it trees emerge. So, inna Allah faliqul habbi wa Allah is the one who splits al-hab wa nawa seeds and the uh, date pits and makes trees sprout from there. So Rabbul Falaq in that context could also mean the one who makes these splittings of the seeds and so on take place. So this is the first ayah. Again, Qul, tell them, O Prophet of Allah, I seek the refuge of the Lord of the Falaq, and I've explained what Falaq means. What are we now seeking refuge from? What do we want protection from? Min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, created. So this is actually a big question that many people have, and many atheists have also, about the issue of why is evil so prevalent in the world? How could a loving God, and how could a compassionate God create so much evil, so much warfare, so much killing, so much murder, so much mayhem in this world. So the answer to that question is that Allah, in fact, is the creator of evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who creates everything. But the creation of that evil does not mean that he implements it. It is the free will of the human being that implements evil and murder and so on in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us humans the free will to do whatever we want, to do good or to do bad. And the ones who do good and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this world, they will be rewarded immensely in the hereafter. However, those people that again use their free will that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them to disobey Allah and to commit evil in the world, to commit murder in the world, and to hurt people in this world, they will obviously be punished. So the free will that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, it, the, the, the fundamental you know, wisdom behind it is that we get to do what we want in this world and the outcome of that will be in the hereafter. So, yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed or created evil, but the human beings are the ones that actually put that evil into place. And they are the ones that destroy, they are the ones that kill, they are the ones that murder, they are the ones that hurt, using the blessing of free will that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them and therefore we will be held accountable. Now other things that, that people have questions about, earthquakes and disease and all of these things, these are things that are part and parcel of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes us to, to see how we react. Sometimes as a punishment, sometimes as a test for us as believers, sometimes as a means to forgive our sins in this world so that we arise with a clean slate in the hereafter. So it's a very lengthy discussion and I don't want to dwell on it too long, but going back to the verse in question, min shari ma khalaq, from the creation, we seek protection, 
from that evil that he subhanahu wa ta'ala created and from the evil of the darkness or the dark night when it falls ghasif is the darkness of the night and we know that the majority of the evil actions that are done are done under the depths of darkness when people are sleeping people are engaging in robberies when people are uh, sleeping people are engaging in zina and adultery when people are uh, cannot see because of the darkness the evil people they use the cover of the darkness to do bad things to other people attack other people kill other people murder other people and so on so the fact that we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection from this the evil of the night and again it's not that the night itself is evil Allah has described Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the, the night a libas for you a covering for you so that basically I mentioned in many places in the Quran so that we could get a good net night's sleep and we could rest and relax so that the night itself is not evil but the evil that is prevalent because of the darkness that is what we are seeking protection from and we seek the protection of the evil of the darkness of the night when it becomes prevalent Waqab means the spread the spread of the darkness the next ayah and the evil of the nafathat refers to those women that blow into the knots of black magic that and the spells uh, that they have conducted and they have tied knots into cloth and handkerchief and so on and they've blown their incantations upon them so like we do rupia and we recite quran and we blow on somebody or we blow into water so these women these evil women they do black magic and they blow into knots on which they have recited incantations so the word nefer it is the blowing with the addition of a little bit of spit coming out while at the same time we blow so this is known as nefer as opposed to nefer nefer means to blow just with air nefer means to blow and at the same time expel little bits of spit uh, so that the uh, the power of the rukia or the incantation can be uh, implemented because of the spit so nefer is what this is referring to now a little bit more detail about this word nafatha why specifically women are mentioned here one of the reasons is mentioned the scholars say that during the time of the prophet والسلام, the majority of the evil doers in terms of doing the black magic and hurting people in this way was done by women so that's why the women are mentioned as the uh, nafatha some scholars say that it refers to nufus and nafatha the word nafs in arabic it's feminine okay so irrespective of the whether it's a male or a female nafs the soul of a person or the identity of a person or the indiv individual nature of a person which is called the nafs it is uh, the word nafs is feminine so irrespective of who the bearers of that nafs are or the ones who are actually conducting the action whether they are male or female the word nafathat would be used to describe a nufus it is the description of nufus rather than simply women so then if we take this perspective then it means male or female regardless of the gender of the people that are doing it they are all included in this and one more interpretation is that this word is what's known as ismul mubalagha and we have for example the word in arabic which is commonly used it's allama allamatun and this word allama even though you can see that it has a ta marbuta at the end which would indicate that it's for female but 
it is known as ism mubalagha and that ism mubalagha is used with this dam albuta even for a male even for a male allama means a very scholarly person and the dam albuta is used for that so if we say for example nafathatun is the original form of this word and the plural of it is nafathat so regardless of who we're talking about male or female that word nafathatun would apply to both males and females so min sharri nafathati fil uqad the word uqad is the plural of al uqda knots so these women they used to tie knots into handkerchiefs and cloths and so on and then make their magic spells and blow into them some scholars they say that an nafathat is not referring to uh, black magic rather it is referring to women that go around gossiping and that is one interpretation also so we seek the refuge of those women that blow into the knots wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad and we seek the refuge of the jealous person when he becomes jealous and we need to differentiate between jealousy and what's known as ribba jealousy hasad in arabic refers to a person who becomes upset when he sees somebody he is enjoying his life he has a good life he has many blessings and the person out of deep hatred for that person who is enjoying himself he wishes that whatever good that that person has it is removed from him this is what jealousy is okay, as opposed to envy that a person sees a person with a nice new car or a new house he feels envious and he wants to have exactly the same thing while not necessarily wanting that nirmat that blessing to be removed from the person who's enjoying it so that in arabic is known as ghibda so hasad that is mentioned in this verse it is a very inherently evil thing that we need to ask Allah to protect us from hasad is such a thing that it can drive a person to murder somebody else and we see this all the time okay that a person he loses his wife runs away with somebody else or his girlfriend runs away with somebody else and he uh, is so jealous that he will kill his girlfriend and that person involved and he the idea will be the wisdom behind him doing it is that if i cannot have her then nobody else can that is the height of jealousy so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in, in this verse that we should ask allah's protection from the hasid when he uh, is becoming jealous so these were the few things that the prophet ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam by being an example for us he asked us to seek refuge from those things again let's recap the whole surah again qul tell them o prophet of allah a'udhu bi rabbil falaq i seek uh, the refuge in the lord of the dawn or the lord of the splitting the one who splits the seeds and so on min sharri ma khalaq from the evil that he created or min sharri ghasitin idha waqad and from the evil of the night when it falls or min sharri nafathati fil waqad and from the evil of those women that blow into the knots doing their incantations and black magic or min sharri hasidin idha hasad and from the evil of the jealous person when he becomes jealous so this concludes the surah surah al falaq the uh, tafsir of it please stand by for the uh, grammatical analysis of this surah jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah <laughs> inshallah we're going to be going through the grammatical analysis of surah al falaq so the first word we have is the word qul which is the command form of qawl the root letters are af waw and lam now the question is where did this waw disappear to when uh, you have it in command form 
So obviously you cannot see the wow. And the reason for that is when you are formulating the command form from letters or from words which have the wow in the middle here, the procedure is as follows, that you have the ya, for example, which is the uh, known as alamatul mutari. You would remove it and you would put a sukoon at the end. Okay, so there would be a bama here. So the ya is removed and there is a sukoon here already. So the word is now kul. Now the rule is that whenever you have what's known as istima sakinain, the first of the sukoons are removed. Okay, so let's go, go through that again. Should be a very uh, easy procedure to, to understand. Again, the mudare form is yaqulu. To make a command, you would remove the ya and you would give a sukun to the end. Okay, so it would end up being kul. Okay, now you have the wow is sakin and the lam is sakin. And that is not permissible in the Arabic language to have two sukuns together. So when the two sakins occur, the first one is removed. Now you end up with the word ul. That, how, that is how the word is formulated. So we carry on. Uh, the next word is a'udhu. And the root letter of a'udhu is a'in, wow, and dhal. Okay. And this hamza you have at the beginning right here, it's an indication that it's a mudari in the first person. Mudari means present tense, first person means I. Okay. Mudari in single first person form means I seek refuge from, I seek refuge, okay? So again, the root letters are Ain, Waw, and Dhal, and that Alif or Hamza in the, in the beginning is an indication that it is for the singular first person. So, so far you have Qul, say, it's a command to the Prophet Wasallam, meaning tell the people, say to the people, A'udhu, I seek refuge, Bi Rabbi. So this Bi Rabbi, it is combined with two, two things. One is the Ba Harful Jar, which is the preposition. And the second thing is the, the noun Rabb. So first of all, the Harful Jar, uh, you have to remember that there are 17 different Huruful Jar. And they will appear in front of the nouns. And they will give the noun a kasra. As you can see here, the uh, ba, it has a kasra underneath it, also known as jar. Uh, it is because of this ba harful jar. Okay. Now, this ba harful jar, it has many different meanings which change according to the context. And here we are using the meaning in. So I seek the refuge in the Lord, or you can say even from the Lord, uh, and Rabb, it's basically uh, the name for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, obviously. And Al-Falaq refers to the morning or the dawn. Okay, The real actual meaning of Al-Falaq is uh, to split open something that splits. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is described in one verse of the Quran as Faliqul Isbah. The one who splits open the morning. Okay, so here, falaq, it's referring to the splitting of the dawn, meaning the splitting that takes place between the night and the morning. So this word, falaq, the root letter, uh, is fa, lam, and qaf. It's pretty straightforward right there anyway. Okay. And like I said, the word falaq in its original form it means uh, to split. 
again go back to the top again قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Say, O Prophet of Allah, usually when you have the word قُلْ in the Qur'an, it is the Prophet وسلم, being instructed to tell the people. So say, I seek the refuge in the Lord of the Dawn. مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ مِنْ is also one of the حروف الجر, and it means from. And as you can see, the word after it, شَر, because of the حرف الجر, مِنْ, this has a kasra or a jar underneath the ra. Okay, so min means from sharri, the evil, and the root letter of shar is actually sheen. Ra and ra. Okay, and remember, whenever you get what seems like two letters, you have here sheen and ra. It seems like two letters. But whenever you get it like that, remember that this is actually a combination of three letters. And that shadda on top, it indicates that it is a combination of two letters. So sheen is there, that's one letter. And then a ra and ra uh, is there. Okay, so sharri, uh, the root letter is sheen, ra and ra. Okay, so uh, from the same word, we use the word in Urdu, shararat. Shararat, okay, because it is actually three root letters, okay. So, min sharri, from the evil, ma khalaq, what he created, or that he created. This ma, in this context, is known as ma mausula, ma mausula. Now, the word ma, it can come in, in many different meanings, and one of them is, as we've mentioned here, Ma Mosula, it can be Ma Nafia also. Okay, Ma Nafia, which is a negative Ma. But here it's Ma Mosula, that means uh, it's translated as uh, it's translated as either what or that. Mosula is this Mosula, Mosula, Ma Mosula. Okay, and the next one, next word is Khalaqa. Khalaqa, it's pretty clear what, what the root letters are. Kha, Lam and Qaf are the root letters, and it means he created. Kha, Lam, and Qaf. Okay, these are the root letters. So Kha, La, Qa, remember when it's in that particular form, uh, it is an indication that it is in the past tense. So, Min Sharri, Ma, Qa, La, Qa, from the evil that he created. He created. So the actual meaning of khalaqa is he created. So again, the translation min sharri ma khalaq. Going back to the previous sentence, I seek refuge uh, of the Lord of the morning or the dawn from what are you please seeking refuge from? Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil that he created. Wa, it means and. Min, again, the min is the same as before. From, and again, you can see that the word sherri, it has a kasra because of uh, the min preceding it. Wa min sherri, and from the evil of ghasiq. Ghasiq is pitch black darkness, okay? And the root letter of this is rain, seen, and half, okay? And when it's in that particular shape with the alif in the middle, so it became ghasiq, it means uh, it's it's called ism file, and we'll see that in the next sentence. It'll be much clearer, clearer when we read the next sentence in the word hasid. But for now, remember that anything on that particular shape, ghasiq, sajid, nasir, that's known as ism file. And ghasiq here means one of complete darkness. From the evil of the complete darkness, idha waqab, when it becomes black or when it becomes dark, or when it overpowers, waqaba is the root letter, is waw, qaf, and ba, and the literal meaning of waqaba is to, for the darkness to spread. And this is again in the uh, 
uh, past tense form, just like you saw above, khalaqa, he created, waqaba, the literal meaning is when he spreads, and here it's referring, what is the thing that is being spread here? It's referring to the shar, or oh, sorry, is it could be even the ghasiq of the darkness when it spreads, ghasiq when it spreads. So waqaba, uh, it's referring back to the ghasiq, the darkness, or the evil of the darkness when it spreads. وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي العقد. And again, we have the min here. Sharri, it also has a kasra here because of the min. And from the evil of the naffathat, the women who blow. Okay, and in the tafsir section, we've already discussed what naffathat means uh, and its different opinions. But uh, the, the root letter is noon, fa, and fa. And what that actually literally means is when you blow on something, one is nafakh, nafakh with a kha, it is just to blow. But nafakh, it means to blow while uh, actually making small droplets of spit come out at the same time. Like little spitlets are coming while you are blowing. So that's called nafakh. Okay, so nafathat means the women that blow in that particular uh, uh, in that particular way, uh, while what they're doing is they're blowing the while they while they're doing their incantations uh, of black magic, okay, and they're blowing onto what fill p al in the knots. Okay, just going back to nafathat uh, for a minute. Remember the at at the end of a noun, it indicates feminine plural, okay? And it's known, the a correct terminology is jama' mu'annath salim. Jama' mu'annath salim, and it indicates feminine, plural feminine, okay? So that's at, muslimat, samawat, okay? That at, it indicates a feminine plural. Fi al in the knots. The word al the root letter is ayn, qaf, and dal, and this is actually the plural of the word uqdatun. Uqdatun. And just as a general rule, when you have this particular shape of word, which is on the wazan of fu'latun, fu'latun, generally the plural is going to be in this shape. Ru, qa, dun. Okay? It's going to be in that shape. So, uqdatun, it means not. Uqad is the plural. It means not. Okay, so from the evil of those women that blow in the knots, meaning they are doing their black magic on the knots and they're blowing their spells onto the knots. Wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad and min again. It is indicative it's of the word from. It's a harful jar, and because of that sherry, it has a kasra at the end. Hasidin, hasid, again, I mentioned that earlier. It is ism fail. Remember, whenever we get this particular shape of word, the root letter here is ha, seen, and dal. Okay? But whenever you get the shape of this particular shape, ha sid. Okay, it means one that is doing whatever the root letter is indicating. Okay, so the root letter is indicating jealousy. So ha sid means the one who is jealous. Okay, the same way you have, for example, the word sajid. Okay, so this is very clear what the word sajid means. Sajada, sa, ja. The root letter, put it into that particular form, it means one who prostrates, and so on and so forth. This particular shape is called ism file. Okay, and and let's say this this one should be an easy one for you. la it means to kill. Okay, he killed. 
you put it into that particular shape, ism fine, qatil, it means obviously one who kills a murderer, qatilun. Okay. So wamin shari hasidin ida hasad, and from the evil of the one who is jealous, ida hasad, when he becomes jealous. And again, the root letter is hasada, and this particular form, just like khalaqa, waqaba, hasada, it is past tense. It means when he became jealous. Now, just a point to note uh, while we are on the subject of this particular verb. Remember, when you, whenever you have a past tense and prior to that you have ida, it actually turns the past tense into the meaning of future tense. Okay? For example, in ida ja'a nasrullahi wal fath, the word ja'a is actually past tense, but because ida is used in front of it, it actually puts it into either a present or a future tense meaning. Okay, so when the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and victory will come, okay, or when it comes. So ida here, although hasada is in the past tense, ida before it, when he becomes jealous, it puts it into a present tense meaning. Let's go into the translation one more time. Uh, you've uh, gone through the whole wording. So again, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ Say, command to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أَعُوذُ I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn مِنْ شَرِّ from the evil that he created that ma that خَلَقَ he created وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ and from the evil of the darkness when it falls. So إِذَا it is here, waqaba is past tense, but it gives the meaning of present or future tense because of idha. Wamin shirrin nafathati fil uqad, and from the evil of those women that blow into the knots. Wamin shirri hasidin idha hasad, and from the evil of the one who is jealous, idha hasad, when he becomes jealous. Again, idha puts the hasad into the meaning of the present or future tense. With that, inshallah, we conclude this uh, particular surah. If you want to polish up on your Arabic or learn Arabic in detail, I recommend that you go to the website seriousarabic.com and uh, go through the lessons in that, in that website. Uh, that will give you a good foundation for Arabic, inshallah, and it will help you a great deal in understanding the Quran. Jazakumullah khairan. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته